Hey, it's Van Timberlake here. I decided I wanted to see how far I've come with Sudoku solving and also give you a challenging but popular, popular as in well-known puzzle to solve. So this is Tattooing Sunrise by Philip Newman. It's been around for a while. I believe it's been solved on other videos by other uh, YouTube creators. One of my very first Sudoku handmade classic is Tattooing Sunset. And that was a hard puzzle for me to get through. Um, I was not that experienced with working with jellyfish, swordfish, uh, and there's some other intermediate techniques. It took me a long time to solve. In fact, I had to redo it, and then my video is me telling you how I solved it. So what I wanted to see here is if I'm going to do a live solve of Tattooed Sunrise, which should be about the same difficulty level, and it's probably going to have a lot of the similar techniques, the, you know, the swordfish, jellyfish, let's see how far I've come in the last few months. Um, I'll put a link for the, the uh, puzzle below if you want to solve it. Thanks so much, Philip Newman, for giving me permission to solve these on my channel. And with that, it's solving time. So I showed all the candidates because I know it's going to be a pretty hard puzzle to solve. And I remember uh, when I, you know, I've heard about this that, you know, there's not that many candidates to go with. And because of the way they're set up, you know, you're going to have like, like I have these pairs in rows three and four. Um, you're probably going to have to use, like I said, fish type patterns to really make any progress through it. But let's see what else I can find uh, just starting off before I move on. So I'm kind of scanning through the rows right now this, and to see if there's any uh, naked hidden singles that I can kind of work with or any pairs that I might be able to eliminate. And right now I don't see much. Uh, yeah, as I'm looking, now I'm coming row six right now. Not seeing much of anything here. And the other thing about doing Philip Newman puzzles, amazing. He's a super brilliant guy. Is he likes to kind of embed these little patterns. And once you get the pattern down, usually you'll have to use that technique or strategy more than once to kind of keep going through the puzzle. All right, I didn't see anything I can solve right off the bat. Just looking for naked hidden singles. Um, there might be some pairs here. So let's go to the ones. And see if there's anything I can use to solve these ones. No, I think there's just too many candidates for me to do any kind of uh, logical uh, elimination with those ones. Let's go to the twos. Um, I feel like there's something here with the twos. There is a swordfish with the twos. So I I saw it first with the columns. I'll just kind of highlight that because we will be able to make an elimination. So what you see here with the swordfish is that the twos are limited to the three threes of the rows, rows one, six, and seven, and these three columns, row, columns two, five, and eight. That means the twos have to be in that. If you tried, um, so we know the twos have to be there. We can eliminate any of the other twos that are in those these rows, one, uh, six, and seven, right? Okay, so that cannot be a two. That can't be a two, that can't be a two. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, try to put a two here. And what will happen is you'll eliminate the twos to possibly up here. Then you'll have three twos to place in two, uh, in two rows, and that ain't going to work. You can't do it. All right, so we made the eliminations there with the twos. Cool, so that was our first swordfish. I don't see any other eliminations I can make there. Now let's go on to the threes. Again, now I'm kind of looking for another swordfish pattern. Uh, yeah, and of course, yeah, we see one. Hopefully, do you see it? This time, I'm looking across the rows. Uh, what's also interesting is swordfish. A lot of times will work whether you're looking across the rows or the columns. At all, the, but not necessarily. It doesn't always end up that way. So, like, you might be able to look down these columns and see column two, five, uh, and an eight, and make the same elimination. So you can do that with this puzzle in this particular position. But that's not always the case. So just look both ways and see if you can make elimination. So in this case, what I notice is that you know we're limited here to rows eight, four, and three. So that means that the three is going to be in those three spots. So anywhere else in these columns, we can make eliminations. These cannot be threes. All right. So we eliminated those threes right there. But if you had done these, the if you had done the columns in the green, you would have gotten the same elimination. It's kind of cool. Let's move on to the force. Uh, too much going on here with the force. There's there's too many candidates. I can't make any eliminations there. Let's go to the fives. What am I seeing with the fives? 
there is, yep, another swordfish at least. So hopefully you're you're following along with me. Uh, again, I already said, if you checked out Tattooing Sunset, you'd have a pretty good idea of how to do these because this is real similar. So I won't go too much into it, but what you can tell is we can eliminate all of these fives. So this is an ingenious way. Like you do a Newman, Philip Newman puzzle, you figure out the technique and you apply it over and over again, you're going to get good at finding and solving those techniques. And sure enough, yeah, I can see, you know, so now it's like, oh, it's, you know, I'm starting to see these swordfish pretty quickly because I know what to look for when you show the cannons. Now, if you don't show the cannons, much harder to find these, obviously. But see, these are like the base uh, sets, which are rows, and so you're going to eliminate from the cover sets, which are the uh, columns. So you can get rid of all these sixes. And we're trying to whittle it down till we get, you know, only two or, you know, one or two cannons remaining so we can start making some of those eliminations. So a little bit of patience required with the, with the Newman puzzle. All right, here's our next one. Uh, just going down columns one, six, and seven. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is you, it'll be two or three, right, if, if it's a swordfish. You don't have to have them in all three. Uh, the logic still works the same. This is going to lead to some actual solving here because now we have a naked single one. But I'm going to do my due diligence and make all the eliminations first. And hey, we can solve that for an eight. Great. And you see that makes that a seven, nine a pair. So now we can get rid of these sevens and nines throughout the rest of block one, which two, nine make a pair, five, six naked pair. Any other eliminations? I got a one, seven, nine triple. I'll just show the triple. Right there to show that, you know, I can get rid of all the other ones, sevens and nines. And it gives us a two, three, eight triple across row three. Any other eliminations I can make? Uh, 179 triple here. And this is the other key part I remember from doing Tatooine Sunset is in between some of these swordfishes, you had to kind of look for uh, restrictions in the rows and the columns that you're given. It wasn't just, oh, it's going to be an elimination and I can solve for an eight. It's this kind of like cleaning up to look for, and which makes these puzzles just fantastic fun. And it really will stretch you and your limits on what you're doing. Okay, that is all that I see that I can do with the sevens. Let's go to the eights. Yeah, sure enough, we got another swordfish. And to me, you know, it, sometimes I, I see the rows first, sometimes I see it using the columns first. All right, so we can eliminate. So those are the uh, columns 258 are the base sets. So the cover sets where we're going to be making eliminations across rows. Two, row six, and row seven. Nice. And I'm just going to look here. Is there something else that I can make a quick uh, elimination? Uh, no. And let's go to the nines. A lot still going on with the nines. I don't think I can make or scrum down an elimination there. And I'll go real quick over here to the uh, buy value cells to see if there's enough of the buy value cells that I can make some other eliminations. You know, I might be able to do a, some type of uh, W wing or X, Y uh, wing, X, Y, Z wing. Nah, I don't see it. I don't see it yet. And so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time looking for the harder techniques, but I do remember that we couldn't do anything with the ones before. Like there wasn't enough ones for me to make uh, a swordfish. So I'm gonna go back to the ones and see if you know, anything else got revealed. Uh, nothing here. I do have the strong link there, but nothing there with the ones. Back to the twos. Do we now have a restriction on the twos? Uh, nope. That can help us make any solving. No, I don't see any restrictions on the twos. Eight, two, two, three, three, two, two, eight. We've already eliminated an eight right there and an eight right there. Okay. I was just looking at a nice little, kind of like a two string kite. No additional eliminations with those twos. The threes, again, like the ones and the nines, still too many candidates to do anything useful with those, uh, uh, these fours here. All right, let's look at the threes. And the fives, 
what do we have? What do we have? Hmm. Also the fives, sixes, and there sevens. Anything else I can do here? Now I'm kind of like, well, is there some kind of hidden pair down here? You know, kind of the symmetry that Philip created. I don't see that. All right, eights. And then the nines. And again, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, just too many candidates. You're not gonna make an illumination that way. All right, hmm. What do I want to see? What's the effect on this cell? I'm just going to look at this for real quick to see if there's... Yeah, so do you see a hidden pair right here? I can see it. It's a 3-8 hidden pair. So if you look at the 3s, they're limited to these two cells. You look at the 8s, they're also limited to those two cells. So we can get rid of everything else in those cells. Now, the more long you do Sudoku, the longer you're going to find these kind of patterns. And so I was able to just kind of quickly find that pattern, and that give us some eliminations in block nine. Okay, now is there another technique? So look for the, mm, I can't do it the five nine because there's a nine right there. But this should help us along. Now I'll look up here, is there a hidden, uh, is there a kind of hidden pair up here in this block? And I don't, see one right off the bat four five eight hmm okay but what that helped us do again made some more eliminations down here I'm trying to see if that affects our ability to solve I don't see that I'm trying to look for the effect of the uh, the eight three there to see if that's going to help us strong, weak, strong. Uh, fours, no, nope, didn't really eliminate any of the enough of the fours. Uh, fives are still good. The sixes, still good. Sevens, okay. And I'll, I guess I'll focus on the on the nines, right? Because we eliminated some of the nines here as well. So one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Five. Still too many. Hmm. Can it sells there? So now let me look here at. By value cell. So we have a 8, 3 here and an 8, 3 here. So let's see here. 8, 3, 3, 2, 2, 8, 8, 3, 3, 8. 8, 2, 2, 3, 3, 8. All right, so we've kind of made those like XY chain type elimination. So that's not where we're going to get the fruit for this puzzle. But I know I'm on the right track. Um, what I need to look for, and maybe you're seeing it, is probably a couple more of these hidden pairs or maybe uh, triples coming across some of these rows of columns. That yielded us some fruit before. And so now I gotta think that might be the path to go on now. Like I have a 14149, but don't have quite enough to make another elimination along that row. So now I'm gonna see here what is it that's gonna get us across the finish line, as I call it. And the best way to kind of go through this would be these eliminations. Two, three. So now I'm kind of going to focus on these and see, oh, is there some kind of, and there is. So you look right here. What's the other candidate that's locked in here with these twos? It's the eight. You see that? The two and the eight are in the same two spots. Boom, boom. So we can get rid of all these one fours and nines. I think one fours and nines are the ones we couldn't do the swordfish with. So that's kind of a one way we're getting about this. This is tough stuff. And how does that affect our puzzle? One, two, okay, four. Because that's what we've been eliminating. Ones, fours, and nines. Not yet, and nines. So still not enough restrictions. To solve the puzzle. Hopefully you're following along with what I'm what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm like, oh, I don't have enough restrictions. I gotta keep 
I got to find some other eliminations. So now let's, I noticed that the twos and eights, now I'm kind of looking here, you know, two, four, nine, twos and threes. So you look in here and you go, wait, the twos and the threes are limited right there. You see how that works? So we're going to, this is a hidden pair, another hidden pair. So now we can eliminate that, those fours and nines. Nice, huh? All right, anything else? Two wise, two four, right? Two four nine, two eight, good. Let's go to threes and see if there's any of these eliminations we can make the threes. Oh, we'll go back here. Looks like the two three is another hidden pair right there, right? See how it doesn't move? The candidates are the same. One four, one four, nine. And we're, in every case, we're getting rid of ones, fours, and nines. I think we were, we're well on our way to solve this puzzle. Uh, just focus on those twos and threes. Let's go back to the threes. Any other hidden pairs? Nothing with the threes. And I'm basically at a point where I can actually use something to solve what these fours are. All right, let's look at the fives. Um, and so I'm going to look here. Fives and sixes where I got that naked, or that hidden pair. Three fives there, five and a four, nope, five and a nine, nope, there's more nines, five and six, so there's no hidden pairs there, and look down here, that nine's right there, so the fives and nine's not gonna work. Okay, look at the six, so I'm basically just looking where there's just two spots for the six to be, uh, two spots for this particular candidate, and then seeing if I can make an elimination based on that. So I can't do six and seven, how about here, six and nine, nope, six and seven, nope, because of that extra seven. Uh, what about here, six and nine, nope, six and four, no, six and one, nope. How about the sevens, anything maybe that are just seven and nine limited? I'm looking in here, nope. Uh, look in here, in block three, nope. There's three spots for seven, so not enough restrictions yet. One four seven, one four seven nine. Nope. Okay, go to the eights. I think we've just about cleared out all these restrictions that we were looking for. So I'm gonna look here and see if there's any like eight nine pairs that I might have missed. Okay, I don't see any. Uh, how about I up this column? You know, like a four eight, four eight. But there's another four right there, another four right there. Um, but with so can't make that elimination. All right, and how about cut, a cut across this row? I don't, no, nope, the four can be there, so it can't be a four eight elimination. Tough, tough, tough puzzle. But what do we have here? What do we have here? We have a jellyfish. All right, I will show you the jellyfish. And we'll be able to make some more eliminations. So now you're looking at four by four, right? Bigger than the swordfish. These four, the nines are limited in these four columns to four rows. One, two, five, and nine are the rows limited. So we can eliminate all the other nines from rows one, two, five, and nine. So these can't be nines. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is what I was trying to get to. Now, did it get us down to the point where we can do more uh, actual solving? I don't see that, but we got a rid of a ton of these nines, which is what I was looking for. Okay. Let's go back to the ones and let's see if we got the ones down to a point where we can make some eliminations. Same idea. Um, when looking here in row eight, row three, not quite enough ones, fours. The answers are being able to eliminate more of the ones fours and nines. That's how we're going to get through this puzzle.
two, three. Hmm. Oh, well, how about if I just solve this nine right here? That might help. My goodness, how long was that sitting there, people? I am so sorry for wasting your time there. That was pretty easy to see. Okay. We gave ourselves a hidden single nine. Let's move on with the puzzle then. And so what else can we glean from these nines? Uh, anything right here? No? Let's go back to the ones. Now we have what we need to solve this puzzle. Swordfish ones. Right there. Eliminate these ones. Right there. Cool. Uh, oh, let me uh, highlight this, make it look a little bit easier here. Sorry. I need to keep up the theme. So we can eliminate all the rest of these ones as well. Bye bye, all you other ones. And by eliminating those ones, there's only one one left right there. So we can solve that for a one. Okay. And the only other place where we haven't done the solve, we, no, and we can solve this for a one, would be with the fours. And so we did our thing with the nines. We did our thing with the ones. Let's go to the fours. And what is it going to be with the fours that are going to get us through this puzzle? And it's going to be a, I see it as a jellyfish right now. All right, hopefully you see it too. And there might be an easier strategy or, yeah. What do we got here? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? There we go. So this is a jellyfish. I've already explained how to solve these. And then we'll go up and we can get rid of all those extra fours. And what does that do to our puzzle now? Can we solve a four? Uh no, not not just yet. I thought that would just kind of reveal it all. Um it lowered the puzzle down, but it didn't reveal it all. Okay, so what do we have then, people? Nothing with the ones I can do. What about the twos? Now I'm just going to look for something like a simple uh, uh, two-string kite or maybe some kind of skyscraper. There might be those kinds of situations that will help us get to the very end of this puzzle. Because we're at the end now. All right. Nope. The fours are all looking good. The fives. Um... Can't make more eliminations with the fives. The sixes are looking good there. The sevens. Nope, oh, there's our in single seven. Six, five, six. Sweet. Seven, one, four, nine, five, six. Okay, now we got it. Now we've cracked this puzzle. Wow, that was quite an experience. But hey, this was a live solve. I had never solved this puzzle before. I just knew, well, if I could do Tatooine Sunset, and I've gotten really good at all these swordfish and jellyfish, and then being able to spot the pairs and the triples along the way, which I knew were the key uh, intermediate steps, I'd be able to solve this puzzle. Uh, it's rated very difficult. Without those techniques, there's not really an easy way to solve it. And the way Philip does these, it's kind of like he's putting a bunch of layers. You have to kind of go through each layer to get yourself to the virtue solve. Super awesome, very good for learning techniques. It's also something you can't do very simply. You have to apply the logic and be patient. Thank you so much, Philip, for letting me feature your puzzles on this channel. Thank you all so much for watching. Please watch these other videos as you're um, waiting until I send out some new content. Hopefully, I'll get something out to you again soon here, uh, Fridays and Sundays. Thanks again.